Our radiographic entity is synovial chondromatosis by Valerie Dozier and Audrey Aiden. Synovial chondromatosis is an uncommon benign condition in which calcification of cartilage occurs in the joint synovium, forming nodules which may become loose within the joint. It's more commonly seen in joints such as the knee, elbow, and hip, although it is seen rarely in the temporomandibular joint. This image shows a pantomograph of a patient affected by synovial chondromatosis of the right TMJ. There is a primary and a secondary form. In the primary form, cartilaginous bodies develop in the synovial membrane. It has a higher recurrence rate and tends to be more aggressive. The secondary form occurs following some sort of trauma, osteoarthritis, or arthropathy to the joint and presents chronically. Synovial chondromatosis in the TMJ is a very rare condition. Approximately only 120 cases have been reported. It is most commonly found between the ages of 30 and 50. In other joints, it is found in a male to female ratio of 2 to 1. However, in the TMJ, it is found in a female to male ratio of 2.5 to 1. The primary form is less common than the secondary form. Some clinical symptoms include joint pain with no history of trauma to the area, joint swelling, loss of motion in the joint, and grinding and popping of the joint. Some clinical signs typically seen include fluid in the joint upon palpation, limited opening of the mouth if the TMJ is affected, preauricular swelling, and palpable nodules if the calcifications are near the skin. The top image is a patient displaying loss of motion in the joint, and the bottom image is a patient with preauricular swelling. In the radiographic findings of synovial chondromatosis, the location is generalized within the joint. The edge is well localized. There is no defined shape, except more uniform calcifications occur in the secondary form. The internal structure is radiopaque if calcifications have ossified. It can also displace the mandible inferiorly and can affect other structures surrounding the TMJ, such as the lateral pterygoid muscle, intracranial spaces, the temporalis muscle, the masseter muscle, parotid space, external aud auditory canal, and soft tissue. It can appear single or multiple in number and is variable in size depending on the stage. The first differential interpretation is chondrocalcinosis, also known as pseudogout, which is a type of arthritis caused by the precipitation of calcium pyrophosphate crystals. It resembles synovial chondromatosis histologically and radiographically, but has finer calcifications and a more even distribution. It is less common in the TMJ and will appear with predisposing conditions such as gout. This image shows an even distribution of small crystals in the joint space. Another differential interpretation is osteoarthritis. It is an age-related degenerative disease which appears with smaller calcifications. Radiographs will show osteophyte formation, erosion, flattening, sclerosis of the mandibular fossa, and reduction in the joint space. This image shows a misshaped disc in the TMJ due to osteoarthritis. Continuing with differential interpretations, osteochondroma is a cartilage-capped bony growth affecting the appendicular skeleton and rarely involving the mandibular condyle. Pigmented villonodular synovitis can cause focal calcifications that are not localized to a portion of the joint. Treatment will vary as to the progression and location of synovial chondromatosis. Cases will be referred to and treated by a surgeon specializing in the affected area. The first choice and the best choice of treatment would be removal of the calcification bodies and atypical synovial joint tissue by open joint surgery or arthroscopic surgery. Surgery may need to be performed multiple times due to recurrence. The second choice in treatment would be no treatment at all if the calcifications are not interfering with the joint or causing symptoms to the patient. In review, synovial chondromatosis presents with pain and swelling in the joint, loss of motion in the joint, and crepitus. It appears radiographically with a widened joint space, radiopaque nodules near the condylar head, and sclerosis of the glenoid fossa and condyle. Treatment options may consist of arthroscopic or open joint surgery to remove calcification nodules and the affected synovium. If the patient does not complain of symptoms, treatment may not be necessary. These are our resources used during this presentation. These are our image credits.